Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Now to the latest devastating strikes in Ukraine. Russian missiles and drones raining down across the country in the worst single attack since the war began. Overnight, Ukraine retaliating for those devastating strikes, unleashing more than 30 drones over western cities in Russia, including Moscow, killing at least one person and injuring four others. And as you said, this was a massive attack that Russia launched with over 150 missiles and drones hitting more than six major cities in Ukraine, killing at least 39 people and injuring 160 others. Now take a look at this video showing the moment a missile exploded into a large fireball on onto the roof of an apartment building in the capital Kyiv, lighting up the sky. In Dnipro, multiple strikes hit a mall, engulfing it in flames and smoke, sending people running for their lives. And this maternity hospital also hit the destruction, devastating. This morning, search and rescue services are still at those sites, so the death toll could rise. President Vladimir Zelensky saying Russia used nearly every type of weapon in its arsenal. Even in neighboring Poland, at least one Russian missile was detected over its airspace for three minutes, then it vanished off the radar. There are now growing fears that Russia will launch more attacks on New Year's Eve. Growing concerns about escalating attacks in the Red Sea. ABC News got a rare interview with the leader of the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels launching those attacks from Yemen. Foreign correspondent Britt Klenet is in Tel Aviv with the story. As the fighting in southern Gaza intensifies, renewed fears of a wider war breaking out, a leader of the Houthis signaling to ABC News that the Iran-backed group has no plans to stop attacks in the Red Sea. This morning, dramatic images showing mass protests in support of Gaza in Yemen. These weekly rallies erupting since the war began. Thousands of people taking to the streets in support of the Palestinians. This comes as the USS Mason shot down more missile and drone attacks by Iranian-backed militants in the Red Sea. The Houthi rebels operating in Yemen claim the strikes in the vital shipping passage are in protest of Israel's war against Hamas. Houthi leader Mohammed al Houthi sitting down for a rare interview, telling ABC News that the group will escalate strikes on any ship linked to Israel. <laughs> Countries that attack us will be a legitimate target for us, such as the ships belonging to the usurping entity or heading to it. We seek to stop the aggression on Gaza, says al Houthi, blaming President Biden for seeking to expand the conflict. The White House telling ABC News the ambushes have nothing to do with the conflict in Gaza. The Houthis have fired blindly into the Red Sea, targeting vessels impacting over 40 countries around the world. For the second time this month, the Biden administration bypassed Congress and approved an emergency weapons sale to Israel. On Friday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken informed Congress that he approved a more than $147 million sale of high-explosive artillery, munitions, and related equipment. Israel's defense minister says the troops are forging ahead and reaching Hamas command centers and weapons depots. The Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says at least 100 people have been killed in the past 24 hours as Israeli forces bombard Khan Yunis in the Gaza Strip. Israel continues to expand its war in Gaza. According to the UN, nearly 2 million Palestinians have now been displaced from the fighting. Death is easy to find in Gaza. 
Over 21,000 people have been killed, according to the Hamas-run Ministry of Health. Thousands more are left heartbroken. An Israeli strike killed Suhair Nasser's twins on their birthday Thursday. We were sleeping when the house was bombed and the rubble fell on the children, she says. For those left alive, this is life. Braving the winter in massive tent cities. The hungry mob aid trucks entering Gaza. CBS News found hundreds standing in a food line Friday, a handout away from starvation. I'm here to get food for my siblings because we can't afford it, says this girl. Did you get any food, asks producer Marwan El Ghul. No, it's too crowded, she replies. Israel continues to battle militants in Gaza and destroy Hamas tunnels. The fighting in the south has sparked deadly clashes in the north. Lebanese militants Hezbollah fire into Israel on a nearly daily basis. So we were called on... Uh, Captain Eitan of the Northern Parachute Brigade the has held the line since Hamas's murderous October attack. Within 24 hours, we were here with all our troops, with all our gear, with all our equipment, ready to defend and take it to the next stage if, if needed. Yesterday, Israel was engaged on four fronts with attacks from Lebanon and Syria, clashes in the occupied West Bank, and of course, the ongoing war just behind me in Gaza. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. ABC's Phil Lipoff is in Times Square with a look at the security preparations underway for the big ball drop. People come from all over the world to celebrate New Year's Eve here in Times Square, known as the crossroads of the world. New York City's mayor says it is a Herculean effort just to secure this event, something he says his city does very well. This morning, the barricades are up and the security plan in place. We know how to safeguard events of this size. New York City preparing to host more than a million people in Times Square for the ball drop. This year, with war raging between Israel and Hamas free, free, free Palestine. and pro-Palestinian demonstrations here at home, law enforcement says it's operating with heightened awareness. In the last two months, protesters have disrupted the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Christmas tree lighting at Rockefeller Center. One noticeable difference this year, the security zone around the celebration will be expanding to give police a buffer zone. Security plans in place from coast to coast for the big night in Philadelphia, a big weekend, an Eagles game, and then New Year's Eve. In Las Vegas, 400,000 people expected on the Strip. Police will be flying choppers low to spot any potential problems. One thing's for certain, law enforcement officials telling ABC News' Aaron Katursky, they are ready. We cannot take second place. We're always taking first place when it comes to something like this and being prepared and ready to respond. And hopefully we're going to prevent something from happening. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says security will be tightened statewide uh, as well, especially at bridges, tunnels, and the airports, using every available agency from the state police to the New York National Guard. Luke, 2125. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The border situation is pushing some of America's cities to the brink as more buses of migrants arrive from Texas. The city says these buses full of migrants came in without warning, and now police are planning to stake out all of this as the city prepares to take action against the bus companies to deter more unplanned drop-offs.
This morning, more migrants arriving in New York City. Bus after bus, at least six, pulling into the city's Port Authority, unannounced Friday morning, less than 48 hours after Mayor Eric Adams signed an executive order designed to slow the surge. We're saying that between a certain period of time, you are allowed to drop off uh, migrants in the city, but you're going to do it at the location that we specify so we don't overtax our resources, our manpower. The mayor's sweeping executive order requires a 32-hour advance notice from bus companies with further restrictions on the hours they can drop off. The penalty for violations, possible misdemeanor charges, fines, and even buses being impounded. The mayor's office says more than 7,000 asylum seekers have arrived in New York City in just the past two weeks. Other major cities also grappling with the surge, including big city leaders from Chicago and Denver, calling for federal support to help manage the flow, accusing Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott of cruel and inhumane politics as he buses migrants across the country. The state of Texas has a responsibility to connect with municipalities around the country to help address and to deal with this crisis. Governor Abbott firing back at the accusations, his spokesperson telling ABC News earlier this week, instead of attacking Texas efforts to provide relief to our overwhelmed border communities, these Democrat mayors should call on their party leader to finally do his job and secure the border. It comes on the heels of talks between the U.S. and Mexico this week, when Secretary Anthony Blinken met with Mexico's president to discuss ways to limit the swell of migrants at the southern border. But Mexico's president is pressing the U.S. for more aid. And meanwhile, the pressure for action is growing as a caravan of thousands moves through Mexico toward the U.S. border. Ferocious winds, giant hail, intense rain, smashed parts of South Queensland, bringing down trees and power lines. Severe storms warnings remain in place for residents further north as thousands of households remain without power. From one end of the coast to the other and across the Darling Downs. Mother Nature unleashing her wrath. Communities still scrambling to recover from wild weather earlier in the week, watching on with dread as another round of storms rolled in. In Tara, balls of ice the size of golf balls smashing homes and cars. Wind gusts in excess of 90 kilometres an hour recorded at Gympie, near Burham on the Sunshine Coast, recording 110 millimetres of rain in just two hours. Flash flooding at Gold Coast theme parks giving new meaning to the name wet and wild. A lightning bolt even taking out a chunk of a building in Coolangatta. In Jimboomba, a man lucky to be alive after a tree fell and crushed his tractor. These storms are popping up. They are short notice and they are moving through an area quite quickly. More than 15,000 homes plunged into darkness from Gympie to Clontarf. Destructive winds and lightning bringing down 65 power lines. More than 36,000 homes now without electricity across the state. As cleanup crews face an uphill battle with more storms and flash flooding forecast. With more dangerous weather predicted over the coming days, council offering free sandbags from several locations across Greater Brisbane. Residents urge to prepare their homes now. Hopes of ending the year on a high clouded with uncertainty. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, Things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and given in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. Water levels in Budapest provoked by heavy rain and snow thought in exceptionally mild weather are the highest for the last decade. Late on Wednesday, the peak level of the Danube running through the Hungarian capital was at 6.93 meters. Cars had to be removed from lower embankments on both districts of Buda and Pest, said the mayor's office. Flood barriers were erected this week at numerous locations along the Dutch River Isle, following an expected period of heavy downpours. According to authorities, the water level in the Isle was rising, quote, very fast, sometimes at a rate at one centimeter per hour. 
Anticipating heavy rainfall in the upcoming days, floodwaters in western Lithuania are expected to rise 15 to 25 millimeters, concerning officials. Home to the delta of the river Namunas, the west of the country typically experiences flooding in the spring. However, this winter marks the second instance in two months where natural water levels have reached critical levels. Brace for more! <laughs> That's the grim warning today after monster waves, one after another, pounded the west coast. This guy gets washed off his feet. Oh my God! These kids run for cover. Too late. Check this out. It's a mile long berm or sand barrier that's been thrown up overnight to try to protect these houses and businesses on the shore in Ventura, California. Authorities forecast the surf will be extremely dangerous again this New Year's Eve weekend. Waves are going to be running 18 to 20 feet. If you think about that, if you're six feet tall, a 20 foot wave is 14 feet over your head or as high as a two-story building. Everybody was running for their lives and screaming. Colin Hogue shot this scary video. Have you ever seen anything like what you saw yesterday? Never in my life. I've seen big waves, but I've never seen something that looked similar to a tsunami. As for that hotel, this is what it looks like inside today, closed because of the flooding. There is sand and mud all over the floor. It's wet. There's eight rooms along here that are just gone. Luke, 2125. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. A trans actor having a meltdown at the airport and accusing a Delta staffer of committing a human rights violation for misgendering him. Tommy Dorfman went on a tirade against a gate agent after a different employee accidentally referred to him as he. And what about when an adult employee misgenders I'm you so intentionally? Sorry, while, she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. Yeah. Okay. Multiple times. Gotcha. Both of you have. Sorry. Wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal, that's it also. Well, okay. she did do it intentionally twice. So you're talking to me it too. You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have full authority escort you out the building right this moment if you want to play that game with me. Despite getting ambushed with a camera in his face, the Delta employee handled himself with class and poise, while Tommy tried to film some kind of gotcha moment to get more views on social media. Tommy had a pretty mediocre acting career, but after coming out as a transgender in 2021, Tommy shifted priorities from acting to becoming an online trans activist. Now Tommy has a podcast, and he pals around with people like Dylan Mulvaney, where they talk about such pressing issues, such as posting borderline naked photos online. Last week I showed my nipples on Instagram, like through a see-through uh, dress, and that was really like, slay. I thank you. But Did it you was, get taken down? Got TikTok, the TikTok got taken ah! down. I got a flag. That was my first flag ever on TikTok. Is this what they think real women sit around and talk about? But the trans psyop isn't just happening in America. Canada is demanding that all government bathrooms, regardless of gender, provide free tampons and menstruation products. What? Regardless of the country, the left is determined to eradicate gender and demean the beauty and purpose of women. Live Action founder and president Lila Rose joins me now. Lila, welcome. Tell me what concerns you the most about the transgender movement. First of all, looking at what you just said about Canada, I'm going to say something crazy. Men do not need tampons, Rachel, and the Canadian government would be wise to figure that out. But, you know, it's deeply concerning because womanhood is an incredible, beautiful gift, and it's something unique, and it deserves its acknowledgement in society. And to have that completely uh, just hijacked by activists who are calling it a human rights abuse, to call a man a man. Uh, the human rights abuse in America today is the fact that we kill 2,500 babies in the womb every single day. It's not that we are treating people with mental health problems and saying, oh, accidentally calling them a, a, the wrong a pronoun, as they say, when really it's a problem to elevate a mental health problem as the identity of a person. So I think we need a heavy dose of reality here in the U.S. and in Canada and, and throughout the West. It's, it's, a, it's a problem creeping throughout the Western world. As for Justin Trudeau, 
I can't understand why that weirdo wants <laughs> tampons in the bathrooms. I just, I, I, I don't know why they want to impose that lunacy on everybody. But clearly, this is an, a, an ideology and an agenda that has, is, has sees, I see no sign of it abating. I mean, we don't call babies babies in the womb anymore. We don't call men men anymore, women women. We need to get back to reality, and that starts with biological facts. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. The phrase debased mind is found in Romans 128 in reference to those whom God has rejected as godless and wicked. The Greek word translated debased is adokimos, which means unacceptable, that is, rejected, by implication, worthless. In Titus 116, the Apostle Paul refers to those whose works are debased. They profess to know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. People who are classified as having a debased mind have some knowledge of God and perhaps know of His commandments, but they live impure lives and have no desire to please God. Those who have debased minds live corrupt and selfish lives, and sin is justified and acceptable to them. The debased are those whom God has rejected and is left to their own devices. Luke 17, 26-30 And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Just in the days of Noah, when God sent a flood, and in the days of Lot, when God sent fire and brimstone to judge mankind, he is about to send his final judgments on a wicked and unrepentant world. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, 
cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100 pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged, according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book of life? If not, I pray you get that done today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.